The uh, start of the day, I, I just, I'm number one, thankful for the weather. Um, last year's, uh, you know, weather was made for a difficult day for all of us, I think. And um, so thankful. It was such a beautiful day for A Day. And just to stand at the end of the, the Tiger Walk and welcome all of our newcomers and our returners to Jordan Hare, which uh, it's got to be special when we walk in the stadium um, and to see all of our cheerleaders, our band, and fans uh, to show up for a spring game like today just tells you again about the Auburn spirit, the Auburn family, who they really are. So um, beautiful day and a lot of great recruits here. So all of that was good last night and this morning and we'll visit with them some more this afternoon. Been to the game, I thought. Uh, I still thought we were lacking a little uh, energy and pizzazz offensively to start the, the uh, we've got to change that mentality when we come in the stadium. Um, but, uh, you know, there was a lot of good things that happened. Uh, it was good for our defense to play really well. I thought they stopped the run extremely well. And then to see us make some explosive plays in the pass game was really good. Uh, Robert and Cam and, and others that, uh, that that got some of those opportunities. So um, all in all, loved what it came down to. And, you know, I don't praise the specialist enough, but uh, in the, our punt period today, I thought Oscar was phenomenal in his hang time, his directional kicks, and, and our long snapper, Reed Hughes, has, has been very, very solid. And then you get to, you know, a field goal kicking contest like today, I think we got a pretty good chance if it, if it goes kicker on kicker because we've got uh, two of the best. And, and how about our freshman today, Towns, just acting like it was uh, kind of a normal thing and had, uh, had zero uh, issues with any nervous or timing seemed very very calm and didn't get sped up in his in his motions and then uh, to kick uh, I guess that was what 58 ish or so and the thing had been good from 65 it hit way up on the on the upright so um, I'm pleased pleased with the crowd and just love our fans and uh, I know we got a long way to go and a lot to clean up and uh, we certainly can't come into the stadium flat like I kind of felt like we did at first. But um, I'm pleased with the spring. I thought our coaches, give them a lot of credit. I thought they really prepared hard for every single practice. And, and uh, we got the most out of every minute that we were allowed to, to be with our kids in spring. Let's start here on the front, Jason. You, you touched on, on special teams, but just to have that solid of a group in spring, how, how valuable is that? heading into the summer and into a season? Well, it gives us great confidence. I mean, points are important anytime you can get them. And I think we've already, Alex has already proven that he can get the job done there and he's been injured all spring. So that was a great opportunity for Towns to step in and show us what he could do. And so then we're really, really confident in both of them uh, standing here today. And, and obviously Oscar's been very solid punting too. So I think we're gonna be a really solid special teams unit based on what we've seen this spring. Coach, we all know how talented Cam Coleman is, but to get to see him out there in game action, makes a couple plays, the diving catch early on, and catches a touchdown. For fans that have been longing for a playmaker at that position, how excited are you to kind of unleash him come the fall? Well, I'm, I, I think he changes us. You know, we need more. Um, can't just, you know, anxious to get uh, the other signees here like Perry and, and Malcolm. To, to join with that group. But I am glad our fans got to see that. I'm, I'm quite sure that they were very excited to see that. He, he just tracks the ball and thinks every ball is catchable. And, you know, I know he made a couple of great ones, but there's one he didn't that I honestly thought might have been his best effort of the day. It was kind of like, I, I don't know how to describe Around it, the back. a hound the back. But I, he honestly all had that for a second and I'm not sure it wasn't interference, but um, they didn't call many of those today. But just to see him, he just tracks the ball really naturally. And um, and he's so teachable, coachable. And, you know, he, he made a couple of MAs in the tight red zone today on, on balls that we were hoping to throw him down there and kind of got us in trouble and had to make us kick some field goals. So that's on us. We've got to clean it up and make sure he knows the whole system and, and what he can do. But when he knows what to do, he's a really, really talented. John Zena. Coach, I know you can't really judge from a spring game, but based on what you've seen spring from recruiting and everything, do you feel like you put more pieces together to have a, a better passing game, which obviously you want? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we're, you know, the 
more talented receivers we get, the, the better our passing game is going to be. And you know, we'll make sure our quarterbacks understand we made a couple mistakes there today. We threw a few slants behind people, um, but uh, I think I'm confident that we can move the football if, if we continue to add pieces to the to the talent of the roster. And um, you know, I think we've done that some. We need to continue to do that. Coach, last year going into the bowl game, there was some talk and some schools went to the helmet communication technique. Is there, now that you've got some time to implement it, what's the plan as far as the upcoming fall maybe activating that? Yeah, we, uh, we, we, we toyed with it the last two Saturdays and, and, and used it. Um, it doesn't change the game at all for those that choose to be no huddle, truthfully. Um, if you're going with any tempo, if you want to wait and communicate with the quarterback to the 15 second mark, you know, there's some things that that could probably help with. Um, and certainly it helps if you get in the huddle, you don't have to signal anything anymore. So I, I suspect that it's going to make us do and others do all of the above. Um, have our normal operation, go in some, hey, let's get to the line, but let's talk through this a little bit and get in the huddle some. Uh, I think it'll it'll cause all of us to do some of that. Uh, Coach, um, you talked a little bit earlier in the spring about the defensive line and maybe needing to go get some more pieces, but how did you feel like they performed today? Really well. I hadn't watched the film, obviously, but uh, thought didn't feel like uh, I felt like they won the line of scrimmage, and so that's that's very positive. And I like the guys and the effort they're giving over there. Do I just don't think you can ever have enough of them. We got a couple spots left on our roster. If you're going to fill it, let's fill it with D line and receivers. You know, I think that's where we're we kind of need to add some 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 more depth. So, but it did seem that they played well today, and we need those young kids like DJ Reed and Bobby to come on. And I thought DJ made a couple plays in the backfield. TJ Lindsey showed up. Um, you know, obviously the two young ends are going to be very talented, and. Um, I was excited, but I thought I thought the D line kind of dominated the line of scrimmage today. Coach, you guys spent a lot of time in your recruiting in East Alabama, and a lot of that showed up today. Obviously, Cam Coleman, 19 yards receiving, Townsend doing 7 for 7 field goals, Dylan Gentry had a couple catches, JC Hart made a couple plays on the defensive side. Just how does that, you know, just you know, start, you start to see the fruit bearing of that work that you guys have done in East Alabama? Yeah, well, you start at home um, with recruiting. You can't fill the whole roster from, from just Alabama, but we want to win our share of battles here. We've said that since we, we came and in the 24 cycle that we had a full year to recruit kids. You know, we won our fair share of battles in this state, and it's good to see them have success, and hopefully we can carry that through to 25 and 26 also. Yeah, I thought they – well, what I, what I mean by that is, you know, I didn't the fourth quarter at all, but I kind of adjusted the like the, the starting field position some and and you didn't have to get a whole lot to get an, a field goal attempt. So that's probably what I meant by that. The, the fourth quarter we started everything back at the 30 or 25, and um, so the points that were earned in that quarter were earned. But uh, they, they probably deserved to win the day. Um, but it was good to see it come down to a pressure kick like that and make us execute. I want to ask you about Robert Lewis and the several big catches that we've seen him a lot, especially the last few weeks. What does he bring to you all as a wide receiver, as a veteran guy? Uh, yeah, forward? maturity, you said it. Veteran maturity, guy that's played a lot of snaps. Uh, really good route runner. I think his hands are really good also. So it was good to see him have some, some nice catches today. He's done that all spring. He's going to be a valuable, valuable part to that room for sure. In the back, we've got two more. Back to the back. Coach, you were said to be one of the best teachers Well, I think we got better this spring of understanding kind of what the expectations are from that position in running our offense. And um, I honestly felt like standing back there today that most of the decisions were correct. Um, I, mean, I didn't always like some of the throws that were made, but I did think in, in the run RPO game that uh, most of the decisions were correct. I'll have to watch the film and see, but 
Um, I think I, I know that we improved our knowledge of us being on the same page of what our expectations are in this offense for our quarterbacks. Mike, last one. Uh, Coach, speaking of expectations, you talked about the quarterbacks and the decision making. Simple. You went back to familiar terminology. Uh, how have you guys made progress with that, and, and how did that translate to what we saw? It's it's one hundred percent back to you know what I've always called from my high school days. Truthfully, I hadn't changed much, um, and so we just we went back uh, starting in January and, and just went back to our old terminology of, of the way we call things. And, uh, the good things, you know, bringing Nick's in to, to be the coordinator. Um, he had done that five years with me, so it wasn't far into him. And Kent, as a quarterback coach, has been with me for a long time too. So and Ben also, and we got Maurice Harris back in that room also. And so everybody has has kind of uh, been familiar with it, except for Jake, which is really easy for him because it's still very similar in the run game. Pass game's a little different verbiage, but. Um, Glad to, that we're, I'm more comfortable for sure. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you guys. Okay.